Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to today's Institute of Asset Management webinar. Our topic today is integrating lean thinking and ISO 55000. Um, before we start, a few quick uh, reminders. First of all, who are your hosts today, as usual? Uh, we have uh, Tom Smith of the University of Wisconsin and also a director of the IEM US chapter and a distinguished member of ISO's TC251, the committee that manages the ISO 55000 series, and myself, Bado Anayans, based in Canada. I work for Copper Leaf. I'm the chair of the Canadian chapter of the IEM. And also, right now, I have been voluntold to be the uh, chair of the Canadian delegation to ISO for TC251. So welcome, everybody, and welcome, Tom. Very quickly, the simple rule for today, we have a large audience. We're already well above 100 people online, so clearly we can't handle verbal questions. So you will see uh, in your GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar dialog box that there is a questions tab. Please use that to um, uh, type in your questions. We'll use that to pick up questions as they come in and uh, answer as many of them as possible uh, online, of course. Those that we cannot answer today just because we're out of time um, will be following up with emails. Because we're doing this uh, in typing in text, uh, in text, in questions, please make sure that you're as specific as possible uh, since we, we can't really go back and forth too much. And um, for those of you who uh, like what we hear, what you hear today, uh, we're always looking for uh, future webinars, future topics. So please don't hesitate to contact us, and you'll see our contact details at the end of this session. So today's presenter um, is Bernard Gaudreau. Uh, he is a Canadian presenter for once, like we've had a few US-based presenters lately. Now we're switching to Canada. Um, he is the president of Planifica in uh, Quebec. Um, Bernard has uh, 18 years of experience in asset management. He specializes in development and implementation of asset management strategies, and he also coaches his clients in organizational change management. Uh, before founding Planifica in 2005, he occupied several strategy positions in firms specializing in municipal asset management, and he is a member of the um, Institute of Asset Management's Board of Directors in the UK and also of the Executive Committee in Canada. He was one of the founding members of the Canadian chapter. Uh, Bernard holds a, holds a certificate in leading professional service firms from the uh, University of Harvard, and he also has a BA in business administration of the Laval University in Quebec. And because Bernard is francophone, and therefore I assume that many of his friends in Quebec are listening, we're doing it all over in French. Bernard cumule plus de 18 ans d'expérience dans, dans le domaine de la gestion d'actifs. Uh, il se spécialise dans l'élaboration et la mise en place des stratégies et de plans de gestion d'actifs efficaces. Il accompagne également ses clients dans la gestion du changement organisationnel. Avant de confonder Planifica en 2005, il a cumulé plusieurs postes stratégiques pour une firme spécialisée dans la gestion d'actifs municipaux. Monsieur Gaudreau est membre du CA et du comité exécutif de l'Institut of Asset Management du Canada pour pouvoir promouvoir le savoir et les bonnes pratiques en gestion d'actifs et il sert évidemment les intérêts du Québec. Il fait partie des membres fondateurs qui ont créé ce chapitre canadien et il siège également au siège central, euh, au conseil du siège central de l'IAM en Angleterre. Monsieur Gaudreau détient un certificat en gestion de firmes de services professionnels de l'Université de Harvard et un baccalauréat en administration des affaires de l'Université de Laval. There you go, that's the only French here today, but we did it. Um, so with that, um, I am going to hand over to Bernard uh, so that he can actually start uh, his presentation regarding integrating lean thinking and ISO 55000. Bernard, over to you. I'm going to make you presenter. Um, just give me a second. There you go, Bernard. You should have control. All right, uh, thanks, uh, Badawain. Uh, do you see well my screen? Yes, indeed. All right, so um, good afternoon. Uh, thanks, Tom, uh, and thanks, uh, Badawain, for this opportunity for uh, presenting to me. Um, my goal with this presentation is really to stimulate insight and thoughts uh, about asset management and lean management. So unfortunately, the format and technology we're using uh, does not allow us to have an open discussion. But this was really the, the aim of this uh, presentation. So we will try to do it with uh, what we have. 
And um, after each session, I will turn to you, audience, for participation and stimulate discussion, uh, as Baldwin mentioned, with the chat tool. Um, Tom will pick some comment uh, and or question and share it with us. Uh, hope this uh, differ a little bit from uh, the traditional masterful presentation. We have uh, a lot uh, with this uh, kind of uh, uh, work remote time, uh, COVID-19, and I want this to be uh, collaborative and I don't have the wisdom uh, about lean and asset management, so let's try to use this moment to share knowledge uh, together. So uh, in 2016, during my uh, summer vacation in Florida, when uh, we were allowed to travel, uh, I uh, read Gamba Walk uh, by uh, Jim Walmack, and I started to see many uh, similarities uh, with lean and asset management. Since then, um, I continued my uh, asset management journey always with this in mind and started to document myself uh, uh, with the lean community, uh, the tools, the associations. And I even went on uh, attending training for the, the white belt and yellow belt in uh, lean uh, Six Sigma. Uh, today, my presentation is what I can share with you from my lens of uh, 20 years of, of consulting and asset management with many industries and particularly uh, for the past years with the mining uh, organization where uh, I have uh, audited ISO 55001, two major business units in Canada and the US. So the present play presentation plan today is break down in, in four section, um, a quick overview of what is lean and, and asset management, uh, how they look like, how they do connect, and how uh, we create value. Um, so let's get started. And by the way, I'm uh, like Baudouin uh, told you, I'm a French Canadian, so uh, bear with me with my English if it's not perfect. So um, here we go. Um, all right, let's change. Yes, so. Um, Lean, what is uh, Lean? It's uh, maximizing uh, customer uh, value by uh, reducing waste. So at first, the term value is very interesting and, and also customer. Um, regarding asset management, um, creating value from assets in balancing risk, costs, and performance. Again, the term value is at the forefront, and I think it's a good assumption here that uh, we are aiming for a, a common goal. Um, so lean manufacturing, what is it? Uh, if we look at the top right corner here um, of the screen, we have a great summary of what the aim of lean is all about. Uh, so we have the optimist, uh, which the glass is half full. We have the pessimist, which the, the glass is uh, half empty. And at the end, we have the lean thinker, uh, why the glass is as twice as it, it should be. So that's really a good summary of what all it's all about. And um, actually, it started from the automotive industry uh, in the uh, early 15s. And Henry Ford was really at the birth with uh, the, the fabrication step process in sequence with the Model T uh, of the, the lean thinking. After that, uh, Toyota was inspired uh, by the flow production system developed by Henry Ford. And uh, the flow production uh, uses moving assembly lines to produce cars uh, by introducing bell conveyor. This development made the manufacturing simplistic and parts were made interchangeable, uh, a key factor for success of mass production. So Toyota wanted to increase their productivity and look at the success of Ford, uh, but due to the lack of financial after World War II and the human resources, uh, the changing market on demand, they wanted to have uh, more uh, variability of products. So Toyota had to develop his own production method, and, and this became the uh, Toyota product uh, production system. Um, 
In the late, in the early 90s, uh, Jim Walmack uh, was really the, the instigator uh, of uh, lean enterprise. And, and with his first book, what uh, the machine that changed the world, um, Jim uh, Womack was the research di director at the International Motor Vehicle Program at the MIT uh, in, in Boston. And he was the founder uh, seven years later of the Lean Enterprise Institute uh, based in Boston as well. And uh, 10 years later, uh, the Lean Global Network was uh, founded as well. So the Lean Enterprise Institute, uh, his aim is, uh, and the purpose is, is a body of knowledge and to share experience and process about Lean. And the global network is to make sure that uh, everybody around the globe uh, can share expertise on lean. Uh, those two uh, associations are really a great uh, point of similarities with uh, what we're uh, uh, viewing with the Institute uh, of Asset Management and the Global Forum. Uh, so the lean uh, key principle um, value, uh, we want to identify value from the customer's needs uh, at first and then um, identify what, uh, what is the value stream. So we want to map uh, what is producing uh, value to the customer and we want to reduce wa waste along uh, the way. After waste has been uh, removed, uh, we want to make sure that uh, the flows uh, is smooth with uh, the other uh, steps around the, the value stream and uh, we want to make sure to uh, avoid interruption, delays and, and bottlenecks. Usually there's a good uh, uh, way of uh, improvement in the flows between uh, the different uh, part of the organization, for example, administration, production. Uh, so a lot of time there's big uh, improvement gaps there. Uh, the pool improvement of time to market, a uh, good example of that is absolute vodka. Uh, bottles for the shift are not docking before the shift start. Um, they just have three hours of uh, safety stock on hand. So again, uh, very aligned with uh, with uh, the time to market. Perfection, uh, making lean thinking and process improvement part of the uh, organizational culture. So that's a, a key, uh, key word again here, uh, organizational culture. On the asset management side, um, the asset management practice started around uh, 88, where regulators have asked uh, to assess uh, asset integrity of all platform uh, on, in the North Sea because of uh, the catastrophic event of uh, uh, the failure of Piper Alpha in 88. Um, this is why we use a lot uh, the terms uh, in our industry, what is your burning platform to describe uh, the ignition uh, of asset management journey. Um, other constraints have uh, started also with utilities and public uh, transport uh, privatization in the UK in the mid 90s, um, where massive failure have, uh, have occurred. So with that uh, context, uh, a bunch of uh, motivated uh, engineers started to write uh, the past 55 in a pub. And this was the uh, early birth of uh, the IAM. Uh, back in 1984 and where uh, the PASS 55 uh, was the first uh, uh, element of knowledge sharing by the, the Institute. Um, so the Institute is a body of knowledge with uh, different uh, uh, literature. Uh, the aim is to share uh, this knowledge uh, around the globe. And um, in 2010, a uh, global forum on maintenance and asset management was created where, again, alignment toward asset management around globe was, uh, was uh, uh, looking for. Um, many similarities with the Lean uh, Institute and uh, the Lean Global Network, again, uh, kind of the same years also. Um, so we can be inspired by both 
uh, journey of uh, good step from the uh, Lean Enterprise Institute and uh, also from the Institute of Asset uh, Management. Uh, key principle about the asset management, uh, two journeys, uh, corporate journey, individual journey, uh, alignment is at the forefront uh, framework to get there, 16, 39 subject, seven competencies. Um, you guys are all uh, uh, aware of uh, our industry, so uh, I will be uh, more brief on that, but uh, uh, the key principle here is uh, is really to have a, a, a framework at the heart of uh, the asset management uh, system. So lean and asset management, how they look alike. Uh, from my point of view, I think both are uh, management philosophy. If we look at asset management, creating value from assets, um, having the line of sight at the end, uh, and engaging people to move forward this uh, direction. Lean, it's about creating value to the customer and uh, reducing uh, waste in the value stream and engaging people to do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Here, the people is the key denominator. If you, uh, want, if you want to engage people, you are take, you're talking about a management challenge. And uh, Lean is about culture, uh, it's about getting everyone to uh, to embrace lean in the in the organization. Uh, it's about uh, acting on fact and not on opinion, and we want to uh, work together, not in silos. Very much the same about asset management. Uh, it's a new way of thinking. We want to be aligned with uh, with the business strategy of the of the organization. It's a culture uh, uh, thing also, and we want to bring uh, more engineering into the business and more business into the engineering. So what are the core uh, concepts that, that are similar uh, for, for lean and asset management? So lean, the three main uh, uh, items are, are purpose, process, and people. Um, purpose, if you don't have a clear purpose on the asset management side, alignment will be very difficult to make. Um, in the process side, if you don't have a documented uh, process on how to deliver your purpose with clear role and responsibilities, it will be very hard to get this line of sight. And on the people one, if you need to engage people to make things happen, again, people do asset management, not the assets. So it's very interesting. And uh, again, uh, in, in the IAM uh, poster where, where we, we have a, a couple of terms uh, similar here, uh, maybe the purpose arrow should have been the other way around, but that's just a, an observation on my side. But again, uh, key uh, ingredient of similarity, purpose, process, and people, and, and alignment, process, and, and people and assets. Asset management and lean, um, we have two uh, great visualization of lean and asset management here, uh, the lean house and the asset uh, management onion peel. <laughs> um, Again, the two uh, visualization tool, uh, if, you do, if you want to get to the line of sight uh, to create value, you need to build on solid uh, grounds. And, and that's the aim of the two uh, management approach. Um, here, uh, you can't deliver value, uh, the lean roof or uh, the top of the onion peel if you don't have the structure. You need the foundation in lead and the pillars uh, in the asset management systems. Um, also, the bottom-up approach can represent the maturity level of an organization must achieve to get to a full length integration and asset management alignment. My experience tells me that uh, if the people are focusing too fast on the end result, uh, the lean philosophy takes time and cultural change before uh, being able to function properly. 
Same with asset management. If you don't have an asset register, an asset condition in place, it will be hard to develop robust asset management system. So I'm turning a little bit uh, to you guys. Uh, this is the first section, how they look alike. Any more ideas on your end? What are the similarities in lean and, and, and asset management? Knowing Tom, I'm sure he has a few observations. <laughs> I do. Um, it was interesting when I looked at what you're what you're saying. Um, that lean came out of the the um, automotive industry, but um, we use it, or my department, uh, my colleagues, uh, my research colleagues, and teaching colleagues use it regularly in our university work. Uh, we value stream map our projects, whether they're research or public service projects or coursework. Um, and it really does um, really does keep your feet to the fire in terms of not only mapping the uh, waste or the potential waste uh, at each phase of development, that is the time, effort, and money that goes into the phase and looking at how much there is there, but also the lag times between phases. And uh, universities are notorious for doing things slowly, but we found that if we value stream map what we're doing, we can engage um, we can engage faculty in in a much much quicker development process, a much more rigorous development process, and and everybody involved appreciates it. Um, they like knowing where they are and where they're going, and they like knowing, you know, what the what the last phase was and how long they have. To, through the next one, and and the ultimate the ultimate result is uh, of course delivery to the customer, and we do think of students as customers. I mean, we do pay attention to to what the students pay for and what they're getting for what they pay for, and in our case, uh, a lot of what they're paying is time. Um, they're paying money for tuition, but they're spending time, and we try and we try and respect the time of everybody involved. Uh, faculty and student and I think that's a, a, a part of that lean philosophy is is uh, the communication of what you're doing and the respect for for everybody that's that's involved in the process and I see we have a couple of questions so yeah actually Rolf um, Rolf Godot mentioned that uh, in his mind the concept of asset management is about reaching a steady state versus the stability uh, that uh, lean brings. Um, and the, uh, there's a question here, how does lean and asset management compare regarding stakeholder engagement? Any thoughts on that, Bernard? That's a good question. Hmm. <laughs> that's a very uh, good question. That's a very good question. From my point of view, from uh, the lean, uh, if you value stream, uh, there you will have uh, identify where the uh, uh, stakeholders are critical in, in your value stream and uh, what are your management strategies regarding uh, where, regarding this uh, uh, this identity in, in the value stream. So. Uh, um, then what are the tools to manage or mitigate or to communicate with them? Again, like you said, Tom, uh, uh, many tools, uh, and I will show a little bit uh, further in the presentation, but many tools which Lean use a lot of uh, uh, visualization tool could be very helpful in, in communicating uh, to, to uh, stakeholders. I hope it has answer your question. Well, my one of my comments, we the last uh, webinar we did was with the Port of Virginia, and they talked about their asset management team and our asset management work group and all the members of the group. And one of the um, one of the discussions I had afterwards was about the involvement of um, sales and marketing in asset management and the fact that um, where I've been involved in a number of efforts where once the sales folks understand what asset management does for the organization, they are more than happy to sell it. It helps them. 
And so they're a stakeholder and they come into the process. Uh, if, you're, if you map the process and tell them what's going on and how it helps the, the organization, uh, they get it very quickly. But mm -hmm. you need to, to communicate that. And once that picture is made, then then you really have a you have another stakeholder. And I think that works for all the stakeholders that that the lean approach, that the being efficient and being being um, uh, quantitative and careful uh, with it describing what you're doing uh, helps everybody take it seriously and uh, communicate it. Yep. So here's another question, which is kind of a bit a bit connected, or definitely an interesting one. Again, is what would you say would can be the impacts of the concept of sustainability when using the lean approach to improve asset management? Well, sustainability, uh, I think uh, asset management, uh, the the aim of that asset management at the end, the result is sustainability. So. Uh, uh, you will see where I have done some connection, but uh, lean help you get there on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but for sure, sustainability is at the heart of the thinking because uh, uh, we're, we're thinking about the whole life cycle of asset. And uh, at the end, the result is, is more sustainable. Uh, it's a sustainability approach. Excellent. Well, well, and anytime so, you take the effort seriously, you know, anytime you take it seriously and show people what you're doing quantitatively, it helps sustainability. Yep. Yep. Here's a follow on so question. You, yeah, oh, maybe yeah. you just one more. And so because yeah. I see the time exactly. at 27. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're you're panicking. I can see that. Um, so there's there's one word that's a good one though, and that is a follow-on question on what we were talking about before. And it doesn't lean focus more on a product cycle while asset management focuses on the assets life cycle? A product or a process? A product cycle, so. No, I know, but I'm returning a little bit the question. So okay. that, that's interesting, but uh, that's interesting. But is it more a product or a process? That's, uh, and, and what is a product? Is it a, a service that can be delivered if we produce water, you know. Uh, yeah, good question. But I think in the way we see it, it can be applicable uh, uh, because, you know, on a day to day basis, lean helps you uh, improve your product or the, pro the service delivery also. So it it can be applicable, I think. Yeah. Excellent. Well, then now you're at the half, my, half mark. So yeah, if you uh, want to continue, that would be great. All right. So uh, how they, uh, they connect uh, and, and those questions, thanks uh, again. And uh, I think uh, uh, the, the sharing of knowledge and discussion uh, is very interesting. And I hope that in the future we have uh, more uh, flexibility in the technology to engage this kind of discussion. So thanks for your question and participation. Um, so the journey versus daily, and that's a little bit the last question, a product or, or uh, asset management uh, life cycle. Um, I've looked at, uh, I was looking at the asset management, uh, the IM uh, poster, and uh, actually, uh, I, I look at it uh, a lot <laughs> and it's funny, you always find new stuff each time. So <laughs> seriously, I, 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 but uh, seriously, I, I was looking at it with uh, in mind where lean could fit uh, and there is a continuous improvement loop here. And um, actually uh, uh, lean could be a great fit in, in, in this loop. And, and it's all also further ahead in, in, in the journey. Uh, that's an observation. Uh, so you need to have certain maturity to be able to improve. Uh, and you need tools to assess uh, where you are uh, in the journey. And this is when uh, the, the, the asset maturity uh, scale comes in. Uh, 
bear with me. I hope you will see the, the, the same link. So, so, so we have our maturity scale that is helping us to assess uh, where we are on the journey. And there is uh, six possible stages from innocent to excellent. And actually, uh, this term here, innocent, uh, we had uh, should be banned in French. Uh, the translation for this word is like if you were dumb. So we had a very hard time at first using this graph when it was not translated. But again, so uh, you can identify project opportunities uh, after the, the, the maturity assessment to define your asset management roadmap, but is there is no really improvement loop in the process. Um, and this is where Lean could be integrated to, to help develop the, uh, the asset management maturity. So actually, uh, you know, the current asset management maturity model uh, is a, a comparison model uh, based on asset man management performance uh, a, a maturity level is provided and an improvement loop uh, here uh, in the maturity model is, is probably missing and could be added and this is where lean tools could be used to give direction uh, for the improvement in the maturity uh, before those tools uh, can be used, uh, the asset value must be well defined. Uh, what are the influencing factors for the improvement methods? Uh, what are the industry actors, uh, production process, asset life cycle? But really, uh, once you had uh, created this improvement loop, the improvement method uh, should make a distinction between strategic level, tactical level, operational level. Um, the method also should focus on asset management, uh, not improvement of one activities within the asset management, but again, the big picture. Um, all aspects of asset management as defined as the, in the ISO standard uh, should be taken into account. And, and again, here, uh, data is a word that is uh, very important where we want to base decision on fact uh, on data and not uh, assumption. So lean tools could definitely help improve uh, the asset management journey. Um, we have discussed, uh, Tom has uh, uh, tell, told uh, the example of uh, um, value stream mapping their projects. Um, absolutely, the value stream mapping is really a good tool. That's an example uh, uh, where it's a visual process uh, where you you identify where you create value. And so where what are your critical assets in the value stream? Uh, do you have a different maintenance strategy for those assets? What are the inspection frequency? Uh, it really helps to visualize where you create value. And again, uh, from your purpose, Tom, you said the, uh, the students were your customers. And, and the, so the purpose is, is, is to train uh, students. And, and that's really very important uh, in value stream mapping to attach it to your, to your purpose. Uh, again, uh, with the discussion we had, uh, we need to, to, uh, to have this thinking uh, not about just the asset activities, but throughout the whole uh, life cycle of the asset. And that's a different uh, mindset. So we want to focus a little bit more on the, uh, the, the long term than uh, in the short term. And also on the other way around, so uh, lean for asset management, uh, but what about uh, the assets supporting a, a lean approach and uh, supporting a, the lean enterprise. Well, the more lean you are, the more dependable your asset becomes to the production and therefore asset reliability uh, will be more important when applying lean thinking in, in the production. So there, there's a lot of uh, dependencies on, on, on both asset and, and, um, the lean uh, approach. 
real life example. Um, so um, at one, one mining site, uh, we have visited uh, the Altrox uh, fleet. Uh, each uh, haul trucks has uh, more than 3,000 sensors to uh, measure performance. Um, you saw in the feedback loop a couple of slides ago the data, um, and and you had the analyze box also there. So they were able to analyze uh, for one asset task, which is the the oil changing of the oil truck, and they have analyzed the uh, the oil quality and, and started to to extend um, the interval of service. Uh, extend more than what the, the, the uh, manufacturer were recommending and and they were able with that to uh, extend uh, the service uh, and the, the, the production time to the all trucks and, and this needs to have a, a very more long-term vision for management and really aligned to the purpose of the business so uh, the ground uh, team uh, is doing this kind of strategy. It, it allows uh, the, the, the ground team to, to do this kind of strategy. And, and those kind of analysis to extend uh, service life, uh, to give more production uh, could be applied to pretty much every piece in, in the all truck. So the tires, engine, overall, et cetera. So that's an example of, you know, kind of a, a lean and, and, and asset management uh, integration. So at the end of the day, I think asset management keeps uh, the line of, of sight uh, and lead helps us getting there on a day-to-day -day basis with the different uh, uh, tools to uh, make the, this improvement. Lean can help develop the maturity and create more value along the way and lead management on the other side uh, requires a more uh, reliable asset. So um, again, uh, just uh, maybe uh, five to uh, uh, 10 minutes on, on, on what is your point of view on how they connect. Do you see other links? Uh, uh, any comments on the links uh, with maturity and, and asset reliability? Uh, Tom Baldwin. So I have, um, I have a good question for you, which is very much related to what you just described. And, and the question is, will, will the lean approach affect maintenance strategy and impact asset risk? So the lean uh, with the maintenance strategy is to uh, identify uh, what are the best way of uh, reducing the waste uh, along the value stream. So uh, if the all truck, for example, are coming in uh, for maintenance on uh, too many, uh, the time needs to be extended, uh, then the lean tools to improve this, this uh, problem uh, will be a great value add to uh, engage the people in, in sorting out what is the problem and, and what are the, the solution to uh, improve uh, productivity. But again, uh, it's really to uh, improve productivity and, and, and to reduce waste. And the risk on this on the other side is you need to do it not at the expense of the risk you're willing to uh, to take uh, from your purpose of the business and your context. So, uh, I hope, yeah, that's a little bit of your, uh, I hope I uh, answer a little bit of your question there. That's good. Um, so the, um, I'm just looking here, there's a couple coming in. Um, so therefore, it, it, is it better to have a lean approach or to have a uptime slash prescriptive maintenance approach? Hmm. Or can they be combined? Yeah, and why not? Uh, lean and, and uptime, you know, uptime uh, should be, you know, focusing uh, on, you know, lean you're being lean if you're focusing on that time. So 
I don't see that as uh, competing from my point of view. I don't know you, Tom, or, or Baldwin on your side, but I don't see that competing. No, I, I don't see any competition at all. And I think the thing that you mentioned, which is uh, very appropriate to uh, other discussions we have, is the focus on data. You know, the 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 waste reduction, the, the lag time reduction, and all those things are are completely data driven. And uh, we have we have a lot of we've had a lot of discussion, a lot of issues in asset management around the asset register and around the data collected around asset managements, and um, the fact that in many cases uh, asset data is not there, uh, and the and the, the lean approach uh, is only workable when you when you're willing to collect data. Um, I, I mentioned our university courses. Um, one of the data points that we collect is time on task. That is, every assignment that we give to a student, we measure and test in advance to see how long it's going to take to complete uh, with a, a range of, of students. So that when we design a course and we tell the students it's 50 hours or 500 hours of work, we're not just guessing. Okay. And they genuinely appreciate that because they're budgeting time just like everybody else and i think that that role of data in the lean approach is extremely important and 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 makes that difference between uh as you said the manufacturer's recommendation um the 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 prescriptive maintenance and the um and the value-based maintenance all right well that actually ties in interestingly i mean you, you talk you, you mentioned the word design um, and that, of course, ties into another question that we got in here, which is, do you see a difference between lean and reliability engineering or reliability growth plans? No, because uh, I think in the design phase, lean should be integrated into the design process. Uh, if you want to, you know, in, into your your value stream where you have mapped your value stream, uh, you will design consequently uh, to reduce the most waste uh, from the the design process. I don't know if I got the question right, but uh, that's my. I think lean should be integrated in, in the design process. So. It, it makes sure that you you create a value stream at first that is uh, the most optimist, uh, efficient to what is the purpose of uh, of the plant. We've got a comment here actually in this context, and that is uh, lean eliminates the non-value added activities, but doesn't necessarily reduce the amount of activity. Whereas RCM often identifies activities not currently perform performed but that ought to be or that should be performed. So any comments on that? Well, th that's a good comment. Actually, uh, the, po the, the point of this discussion is, is to see if there is similarities in, into lean and to asset management. And, and is it possible to integrate the best of both world of best of what's in lean to asset management? So if RCM has better way of uh, addressing some part of the asset management journey uh, again I, I don't think we need to see competition and and use whatever tools out there to be more efficient um, yeah so and, if and we have uh, i think we need to uh, unfortunately and it's bad but i think we need to uh, to get to the next uh, section uh, about wine yeah can I ask you one little last question, which is very much tied into what we just talked about? And that is, um, does lean actually deal with unplanned events? Good question. Uh, well, you will you will need to uh, do uh, some uh, Kaizen to, uh, uh, if you, there is an unplanned event and, and uh, you want to make sure that uh, you react the the great the greatest way, so kind of a resilience way of it. Um, so again, you it's a toolbox. So do you use your knife or your hammer today? 
uh, well, it could be used. So if you think uh, you are uh, able to use uh, the Lean Toolbox for uh, addressing uh, an unplanned event, uh, I'm sure the H3 report and the uh, Kaizen tools could be great tools to uh, engage people in making sure that this thing doesn't happen again. Excellent. Well, over to you, Bernard. Go ahead with your last session there. All right. So, uh, how do we create value uh, using uh, maybe the, the the lean tools into the asset management journey? Um, so, how we define value? Well, to uh, widely used approach to conceptualize uh, value uh, in an organization are well value stream, which we have discussed a lot. Uh, and, and value chain also, um, which actually Tom has uh, uh, discussed a lot at the IAM. And as mentioned, the value stream mapping is really a good tool to uh, visualize the value. Um, with Lean, you want to eliminate wa waste along the, the value stream, but on the asset management side, uh, we need to connect the assets together to create a system or a value stream that generate the value. That's food for thought, but you know, uh, if we see assets as a system, uh, this is where the asset system creates value uh, based on, on the purpose uh, of uh, the organization. Um, so how uh, the Lean Toolbox can support the, the, the pillars uh, of asset in the asset management journey a um, couple of lean tools that I've uh, highlighted uh, uh, today, uh, lean boards, uh, which is a really good communication tools uh, to, to uh, visualize, you know, performance. Um, A3 report, uh, problem solving tool, Kaizen, you know, we need to improve process. Um, 5S. Uh, TPM, Total Preventive Maintenance, uh, PDCA, uh, Performance Measure System or KPIs, OEE, so Overall uh, Equipment Effectiveness. This is a great, uh, I think, KPI to uh, help, you know, understand the value uh, of uh, uh, assets. And uh, Pokayoke, where it's a process to avoid uh, mistakes. Um, Lean uh, together solving problems. So like the H3 and Kaizen, I think it's really good tool to engage people uh, onto the asset management journey, but on the day-to-day -day basis. And it's really good to uh, um, have people responsible account and accountable for uh, solving the problem. Uh, this is a kind of an example of uh, what we have done uh, for uh, with an H3 report. Um, actually, there is seven steps in the H3 report. So what is the background? Uh, it's in French, but what is the background? Uh, what are the, the current conditions? Um, what are the goals and the targets? What analysis we have done? Uh, what are the proposed countermeasure? Uh, what is planned? And, and what are the follow-up action to be done? So. Uh, this was an example of a pumping station where we have done this uh, A3 report on uh, uh, an 11 by 17 uh, paper uh, that could be like folded in two and where the operators were walking around with it uh, to discuss with management and the, the team of what was the, the problem and what was the action plan. So they knew like the for what the, the next year they had to, you know, change those kind of equipment for this amount of money and for the two next five, two to five years, what was uh, the next uh, um, equipment to be changed. And then more the long-term approach with the life cycle, six to 10 years. Uh, so they keep the heads up of what's coming and what would be the the, the, the action items to, to follow up on that. So great tool visualize uh, on a 11, 11 by 17 paper, uh, very easy, powerful to communicate and visualize uh, uh, the situation. 
Um, another uh, tool that is uh, uh, could be used is uh, the total uh, preventive maintenance and uh, TPM emphasize on proactive and, and, and preventive maintenance to maximize the, the operational efficiency of, of the equipment. And it blurs the distinction between the role of uh, production and maintenance and, and by placing a strong emphasis on empowering operators and, and uh, to help maintain the, their equipment. So in other words, it, you need to engage people as the machine uptime does not rely on to the the maintenance people hands, but more collaboratively with the operator's hands. A good example of this is a, a plant uh, uh, operator uh, uh, for the line one, for example, and, and uh, do the morning talk to, to all the team with a mic so everybody under, uh, listen to it and, and hear it uh, in, in the plant and about the operations and, and the maintenance upcoming today and that tomorrow there is a major shutdown that is planned. So, so the operator show that he owns all the life cycle of the asset, not just the operation, but the, it's a really a, t a team effort. And uh, from some research I have read, uh, TPM and, and PMS, uh, where, where, where is performance uh, measure system or TPIs, uh, can increase the overall effectiveness uh, of, of uh, asset up to, to 10%. Uh, it can also eliminate the rework like Tom were, was mentioning by 30% in some cases. And what I've uh, seen from, from some uh, mining organization uh, where the goal was to improve the OEE of 5%, it, it, it shows that it was around 800 million uh, of revenue for uh, uh, this mining organization. So big numbers, again, tools to help what is the value. Um, that's the key here and, and asset management. Usually we have, uh, it's a lot of philosophy and, and more theoretical approach sometimes. So if we have tools like this that can help along the journey on a day-to-day -day basis, quantify more of this uh, value. Another tool uh, which is uh, uh, lean boards, uh, again, um, if you don't see it, you cannot own it. So uh, visual management is a key enabler to engage people in the performance uh, of the organization. Lead boards are, are are also maybe all the way to the operator's level in, in an ideal wor world. Um, the frequency of lead, lean boards can be high in some uh, organization. Every day, in some cases, three times a week, uh, it, it can depend on the need, but the, the things is that you show up every time in front of your lean board and you need to be responsible for your KPIs. So it make it clear who owns the responsibility. And if you don't hit the target, you need to explain yourself. So very powerful visualized tool. You need to own your KPIs. And uh, again, it helps in the journey because on a day-to-day -day basis, you are aligned and you want it to hit your, uh, your targets. Um, well, uh, we're going digital with uh, remote work uh, with this uh, resilience uh, mode kind of uh, COVID-19. Uh, so lean board could become more uh, digital board uh, where we have seen, you know, some emerging out there. Um, this is a, an example of the value stream of a, a mining industry. And uh, you can see uh, here what are the assets uh, risk uh, at the forefront and uh, you see from the value stream where you have you know here you have probably uh, a challenge at this uh, plant and uh, actually they had a major shutdown uh, uh, plan there so you can see rapidly where are the risks on the value stream and and what do you do to mitigate those risks um, Again, other indicators that are more and more uh, uh, able to be produced by SharePoint and Power BI out there. 
Um, so again, uh, if you don't see it, you don't own it. So uh, uh, um, the digital uh, with our remote location now will help us uh, to see those kind of, uh, of uh, KPIs. Supporting business stability. Um, I think lean uh, and asset management can support uh, business stability and help create tangible value to organization. Just an example, um, Rio Tinto Group began implementing lean uh, into the aluminum or uh, mining in 204. And uh, really lean, what lean uh, means for them is, is activating cell leaders. So again, this is really connected to the leadership pillar um, that we have in asset management, requesting employee to comply, uh, agree on terms for, of employment with the purpose and, and what it's all about, um, uh, presenting visually the key data related to manufacturing efficiency. So again, visual management. Um, Enabling low tiers employee, lowest tier employee to make database operational decision. Again, uh, the link with the old truck where I have mentioned. So you need to have uh, data to help the team uh, hit the targets. And um, organizing operational and maintenance employees. So governance, um, want to make sure that there is no silos, more people and to uh, integration in the governance of uh, and maintenance of the assets. So with this kind of uh, uh, approach, Lean uh, was named, actually the program of Lean was named at Rio and it was uh, improving performance together. So powerful world, words um, together, I think, and, and it comes back to uh, uh, people do asset management and people do lean management. Um, we deal about people, we, do, we deal about management, so it's management philosophy. And um, at the end, the value for that, uh, that was in the business report where the, in 2008, uh, the lean uh, improving performance together uh, generated uh, around 28 million of uh, improvement and saving. So big numbers. Uh, again, this is interesting. Is it a good tool to help support what is the value of asset management? Um, interesting uh, to know. So if I uh, uh, turn to you guys, uh, 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 what are uh, other good example of there out there? Uh, how do you create value with lean and asset management? Baldwin and, and Tom? Yeah, so first, actually, before we go there, there's a question tied into resilience. You talked quite a bit about resilience, and the question is really, do you see lean needing to adapt to allow for resilience, uh, given the experience of COVID on the supply chain? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, maybe so, because you know, no, nobody was really prepared uh, uh, um, for that. So actually we're, uh, I'm part of one group uh, of the IM, which call is the hot topics. And uh, maybe there are some folks from the group uh, on the, this webinar again, but uh, this could be a very interesting uh, re uh, reflection idea where we need to uh, think of should it should it be integrated or adapt? That's a good question. Yeah. So with regards to good experiences, uh, Ralph Godot, who works uh, in the rail industry or transit and rail industry in Australia, and amazingly is, is with us today. Um, what he mentions is uh, VM boards are used in the Victoria, Australia uh, rail system for tactical management of railways. It's an excellent tool to cascade asset management objectives through the organization. Very interesting. And and there is a question here, which is a bit tied into all this, is do we actually have tools to determine the key parameters for different maintenance regimes uh, during the asset life cycle? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not a maintenance uh, specialist, so 
I cannot answer the, the question, but uh, um, maybe we can uh, find somebody out there uh, in the webinar that can answer that. But uh, from my point, I don't know. Okay, we'll leave it open, and uh, maybe we can uh, we can indeed find find some answers later. Uh, another question, which is a bit tied into this, is what tools have you found useful to bring about the culture acceptance of this new way of doing things? Uh, this this person has found within her industry, public transportation, there's more understanding and respect for reliability engineering, but lean is still very new and not fully appreciated. So that would be interesting to know why it's not uh, appreciated. And uh, but uh, again, um, um, where we go back to the pillars of the lean house, uh, usually the ignition start is with TPM. So where you bring in more of the maintenance people with the operation people. Uh, so it's more of a breaking silos and more about culture and more about, you know, doing things together uh, along the way. So uh, if you adjust governance a little bit on, you know, if the maintenance people are in a, a facility that is not connected to the operation, I don't know, and, and they feel, you know, they are a, a, a tribe, so we want to break the tribe and, and that's TPM could be a good tool to start with. Yeah, uh, we're, we're no. on the hour. Tom, um, do you have any thoughts? I do uh, two things. Um, I really like the point that you made that, um, that Lean uh, provides uh, database delivery at, to the lowest um, level employees, and I think that that getting that that habit of making database decisions at at every level is incredibly important, and not leaving leaving it to mid and upper management and saying, well, they'll take care of the data, but doing it all the way down. And I believe that's also part of the problem with adopting Lean is database decisions are hard and they expose a lot of weaknesses. And people will be naturally fearful uh, of making commitments and uh, making database decisions. It's uh, they're hard to talk your way out of when you make mistakes, and the organization has to make it pretty clear at the beginning uh, how mistakes will be handled and tolerated, and what you know what the bargain is that you're entering into when you make clearly phase-based database decisions. Um, but otherwise, it's a it's a frightening proposition to go from um, whistling your way through a, a day to to a database decisions. Yep. And, and for sure, and and be in front of the lean board and you know defend your KPIs that didn't hit the target for sure. And that's a, that could be a little bit uh, uh, scary. Yeah. Oh, it is scary. Yeah, I've, I've been there <laughs> defending decisions that <laughs> actions that didn't make it. Yeah. Well, good thing is you're still alive, Tom, so you can actually survive those sessions. That's good to know. <laughs> so actually, the, the, the follow on on, uh, on the, uh, the earlier question about transportation is lean is still seen very much as a manufacturing centric discipline and its applicability to public transportation operations is still questioned. Is that, is that a fair comment? Is that something that you guys have experienced too? Well, at, at the start, it was really called, yeah, lean manufacturing, and, and that's why Jim Walmack tried to bring uh, the Lean Enterprise Institute and, and a more broader uh, perspective of where you can apply lean. Actually, in the healthcare, uh, lean is very much, we see a, a lot here in the province, uh, 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 lean management approach uh, develop. Um, also in insurance companies uh, where we see a lot of lean management uh, uh, approach develop um, to become more uh, lean enterprise. So um, yeah, so we see that lean is becoming more and more uh, here, uh, in geographically here, uh, 
we see lean, lean that is uh, more involved in other business than just uh, manufacturing. Excellent. Bernard, I hope that was the end of your presentation because we're over time. Or do you have some further comments or conclusions that you want to present? Well, maybe just to wrap up uh, quick, uh, hope uh, you all have a good insight uh, and discussion. This is really the seeds and, you know, it, it, you're going back with, with this, uh, this uh, insight. And uh, I think clean could be part of the asset management journey and it's a uh, a key component of the uh, continuous improvement and could be supporting the maturity development of uh, of your organization and uh, i think also lean could be a key value driver into the asset management and helping the building the business case and again removing waste from the value stream uh, can increase uh, reliability of the uh, uh, of the assets so uh, uh, great dependencies there so i um, yeah, that's it. So thank you very much, uh, everybody. Well, thank you indeed. Um, I'm just going to quickly, therefore, remind everybody uh, that uh, this is organized by the Institute of Asset Management, and we need you to join because clearly there's a lot of interesting topics that can be discussed. Uh, so join us. There's um, both a U.S. and a Canadian chapter. Both of us have local branches. You can see that here. Um, and the key, of course, is to get involved. Um, and indeed, um, if you have ideas uh, for future webinars, please send them to us. You see our email address is here. And our next webinar, which will be in about four weeks' time, also brought to you from Canada, will, about, will be about modeling in asset management. And I'm talking, unfortunately, of digital models. We're not having any um, kind of... Uh, uh, sex bombs or anything like that uh, on uh, on stage sadly enough it'll be about uh, digital models uh, but nevertheless i think should be very interesting um, and also don't forget of course that uh, come november we will again have our north american conference last year that was a great success this year it will 99 percent sure now that it will be a digital uh, virtual version of the conference but i think that will give us opportunities to actually bring in speakers from further afield and also to have people from further afield uh, participate. So I think that uh, we'll leverage it and we'll make the best out of it. So thank you very much, Bernard. Uh, thank you, Tom. I think uh, your insights were phenomenal. And uh, certainly if I look at the audience numbers, we were, we're peaking at 200 and it stayed at 200 pretty much during the whole session. So clearly you captivated the audience, which is great. Um, the presentation will be made available in a few days time and you will also get a little survey uh, to tell us more about what you think. Thank you again, and we hope to see you soon. Do we stay on, uh, Baudouin? We are going to shut down this webinar pretty soon, um, and the questions that have not been answered live, there's a few coming in right now, we will answer uh, through email to the individuals that are asking, oh, okay. asking them, so don't worry, uh, that will happen. And do you, for uh, the 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 wrap up of this, uh, do you, do you, do you want to talk off uh, this uh, webinar? Yes, I will call you in a second. We'll first uh, log everybody okay. off. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. All right. Sorry. <laughs>